So thank you for joining me this morning. Let me come back and find a comfortable position. So I'm gonna sit myself up on a little block. We can use a cushion. I'm just gonna take a few moments just to all kind of gather ourselves together. Check it out how we feel today. Just taking a few moments to drop in. So we're going to start seated and then we're going to come down onto the floor. If you prefer to go on the floor to begin with, then do. <sighs> so I know sitting cross-legged isn't everyone's favourite position. Mm. So find a position seated or lying down that works for you. And just close your eyes and go in just for a little while. How do you feel this morning? How are we dealing with this situation that we're in? I'm very much aware that we're all able to take exercise wherever we live. Hopefully we have nice places to go walking. But for me, the mind is almost the most important thing to try to calm at the moment. So many what ifs, so many when, how, nobody knows. So I'm always saying nobody knows what our future holds. But even more so for us at the moment, it's very, very... Um, very questionable maybe. So just take, we're going to take five deep breaths here. Just allowing the breath to come in through the nostrils, feeling the movement of the air. Exhale softly, softly, just letting go. Feel the shoulders lift up with your inhale. And exhale, feel them just soften back down. So really begin to connect with our body, the movements, the sensations. Sitting up as tall as you can, maybe it just sometimes be kind of lean forwards. It's totally fine. Just bring yourself back up. And maybe just one more deep breath in. Perfect. And then if you're comfortable, we can stay seated. If you prefer, then we can come down into our supine position. So again, we can still use a cushion maybe behind our head. That may be more comfortable for you. Please always know that it's your place to make sure that you're comfortable. So lying down or seated. If you're lying down, our knees can be bent. We can extend them out if you'd like to. I like having my knees bent. It softens through the lower back. Hands resting on my belly. Chin being drawn in a little bit by the lifting of the head through the, um, the cushion here. Have your head on the floor if you prefer. And just allow yourself to take a handful of breaths here. Maybe feeling your body moving now with your breath if your hands are resting there. If you've got the room, you can take your hands right out to the side. Just whatever feels right for you. So how do we feel? I'm not sure whose mic that is. If you do want to maybe mute yourselves unless you have a question, that may save any feedback perhaps. Notice the tension you're holding in your body. Where is it? Can you isolate it? I know a lot of us have luckily been spent a lot of time gardening lately. It's been lovely, lovely weather all of this time really up until the last few days. So maybe we've got sore shoulders, a little bit of a stiff back. Hmm, just take a few more moments here. Just doing that scan for the top of your head all the way down to the soles of your feet. And just giving your body permission to come to this place of ease, this place of rest. Hmm. Whenever you're ready, just draw one knee in towards your chest and just hug it in and just going to bring it towards you and release it. Still hold it, but just let the arms straighten. Just bring it back in, check out how that hip feels. Again, this may be when you decide to extend out through the other leg, whatever works for you. Just keep your right hand on that right knee if you're using your right knee like I am and just draw a bit of a circle. Feel the tightness in that hip. Remember, we want to feel the tightness, just no grounding, no grinding, no pain, discomfort. Unwind those circles whenever you're ready. Mm. And then draw that knee and just hug it in here, real tight. Draw the shoulders away from your ears, flex up through that foot. If the left foot is still bent, it's totally fine. And then let's stretch that leg right up to the ceiling. 
Again, fully extend the left leg, have it bent, whatever works for you. And always remember this is your practice. If you can hold on a bit higher above the knee, that's fine. Otherwise, below the knee, point the toes, and we're just going to do our little ankle rolls here. Really just making sure that those toes are drawing the biggest circle that ankle joint will allow you to. Mm. Draw the knee in again, lifting up through the head and shoulders, nose to knee, chin to knee. Remember to give a little kiss and then slowly come back down. If you did bend out through the, or rather extend out for the left leg, let's bend it now, right foot back on the floor. And maybe already feel that little bit of softness going on with your thigh there. Let's change legs. So it doesn't matter if you've done the right or the left leg first, just do the other one. Draw it in, just release it away, draw it towards you. I'm beginning to feel that connection between the back of your thighs, your hamstrings, the glutes and the buttocks, and that little tugging in your back. Mm. Again, fully extend the right leg if you choose to, or keep it bent. Keep the hand on that knee. Maybe isolate the pelvic girdle by bringing the other hand onto the hip. Just draw a few circles. And this may be where you notice one hip seems to have a wider range of motion than the other. It's totally fine. Well, let's just do that a little bit more. Unwinding. Draw the knee in, hug it in nice and tight. Mm, maybe flex out through the foot. Maybe here we're going to extend out through the, the other leg, or just whatever works for you. Up to the ceiling now with this second leg. Just take a few moments to find it. May need to be going away from you to get the knee open. It's totally fine, we're all different. Wherever you feel you can hold on to, point the toes and just do some ankle rolls. Maybe some clicking or popping coming from those ankles. And, and wide. If you are holding on to the back of your um, lower leg, then you'll feel the work going on in the calf muscles here as well. Slowly draw that leg back in again, hug it in, lift up through the head and shoulders, nose to knee, chin to knee. Give a little kiss. Slowly head and shoulders back down. Bend the right leg if it was extended, both feet back on the ground. And just take a few moments here, checking out how that feels. Arms a little bit away from our body, just cross the right leg over the left and allow the legs to fall to the right hand side. And just let them hang here, resting on the inside of that left foot. There's nothing to say this left knee has to touch the floor, some of you may be able to, it doesn't matter. But maybe just rock here a little bit, feel the lovely stretching through the waist and the obliques here, through the belly. Slowly and gently come back up. And cross the legs and do the same on the other side. Left leg crosses over. Left leg then becomes the top leg as you allow the legs to fall away. Again, you may find one side has more freedom than the other. That's okay, just kind of, you know, embrace that. And again, just gently rocking. So you feel the gentle rotation here through the sacrum of the lower back, as well as the stretch over the ribs and through the side of your belly. Slowly coming back to centre and cross the legs again. Folks, take your feet as wide as your mat or as wider than your shoulders if you're on the floor. Maybe we don't really need a mat. Slowly just rock those legs from side to side, keeping the upper body still. I sometimes like to bend my elbows and bring my fingertips actually onto my shoulders just to make sure that I'm not moving the upper body. You can move the head in the opposite direction as the knees go to the left, chin goes to the right shoulder. And maybe we started with a pillow, we may find that we, we're kind of happy to kind of let it, let it fall away now. And again, just encourage. Remember, there's a place where they go quite comfortably, they just kind of relax. But then if we lift up this top hip now, we can bring it over a little bit more. So we're deepening this stretch, the rotation, and you kind of begin to feel this down the front of my quads here. Lovely stretch for the hip flexors, very gentle. There's no weight in it per se. Do the same on the other side, maybe just let them hang there. And then kind of lift up this top hip, bring it up and over. So again, we're getting the stretch down the other side of the, um, the leg here on the, the front of the thigh and through the waist and the belly. Slowly come back to centre. Mm, draw those knees in and just hold them here for a couple of seconds. Just check out how that feels. Hands on both knees, few little circular motions. Let's massage through the lower back and the sacrum. And then unwind. 
the other way. Well, that feels good on my back. Perfect. Slowly let those feet come down quite close to your bottom. Now you can see my fingers touch my heels. I've got long arms. But walk the hands down to get the shoulders away from your ears. Draw the chin in. And we're just going to start with little pelvic tilts. Just lifting up through, just really kind of drawing the pubic bone towards the sternum. The navel goes into the inner spine. And then in your own time, as you feel appropriate, just begin to roll the spine up a little bit. Just we take five breaths to come up as high as we need to. Draw the chin in. Feel that you're almost pushing every vertebrae into the floor before you lift it up. And of course, that lovely analogy like a string of pearls as we roll the spine down. And let it be very deliberate, scoop the tailbone up. Tailbone stays up all the time to support, protect the lower back. Knees slightly going away from you, as if you're almost trying to draw your sitting bones towards your heels as you come up. And in your own time, just come up as high as you feel you need to. Maybe stay there for a couple of seconds. Maybe a couple of breaths, maybe bring the hands underneath the back of your thighs, the buttocks to support you. Mm. So the knees are to the other side of the room, draw the navel in. And take a couple of deep breaths here, really feel the stretch through the front of your thighs, the hip flexors, the lower abdominal area, the pelvic floor. And in your own time, maybe you've come down already, it's totally fine. Always remember this is your practice. Slowly, slowly, take a couple of breaths as you roll the spine down. Until finally, 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 that beautiful tailbone just touches the floor. Mm. I always like to broaden my shoulders a little bit after I've done a bridge pose. Move the head a little bit from side to side, draw the chin in. Mm. And just take a few breaths here. Maybe feel that bit of warmth in the back, a bit of buzzing, tingling. Just notice anything, the energy kind of manifests itself in many different ways to us all. So just notice how you feel. Mm. And just try not to fall asleep because you might feel really good now. We're going to draw those knees into our chest, hugging them in. Mm. Rock around a little bit. Just make whatever movements feel as good for you. And then either take the hands behind the back of your thighs, or we can cross the ankles over, reach down for the outer edges of your toes. Oh, that's nice. I can see people waving their feet in the air. Hands come up over and roll yourself up. Nice and controlled. Maybe sit here for just a couple of breaths with your feet off the ground in our little kind of modified boat pose and slowly come back down. Fabulous. So we're going to come into a seated position. Bless you, go to sneeze then. I'll come a little bit further forward so that maybe we can see each other. And just come into a comfortable seat position. Remember, it never has to be with our legs crossed. We can have them wide. We can have them together. Maybe you want to bring one foot in. That feels good. Have the other one wide. Whatever works for you. Cross-legged is just the, the kind of the, the position we're always invited to sit in. Really. And just sit up nice and tall. Take a few moments here. Hmm, maybe notice those hips and thighs feel a little bit warmer, a little bit softer. So it's time to work our way up through the whole of our body. So we're just going to do a few little kind of circular motions. Try not to let the shoulders roll too much. Imagine there's a stick behind you and it's just kind of moving around, spiraling on your tailbone almost. Just transferring the weight from one butt cheek to the other. Cool. And then unwind. Go around the other way. Mm. Perfect. As you exhale now, slide your hands right down to your knees. Draw the navel in and really try to get a rounded back. You can almost pull on your knees to get those shoulders separated. Inhale, bring the hands back to the inner thighs. Elbows back, lift up through the chest and your chin. So we're almost doing a seated cat-cow. Working with your breath, this is a flow, it's a moving meditation. Two more times, exhaling as you round, inhale, exhale, really force the air out, really hold on to those knees to spread the shoulder blades, and then slide the shoulder blades together down your back, lift up through the sternum and the chin, 
and slowly come back to center. Perfect. If you've got enough space beside you, take the arms out. We're going to lift the arms up coming together. Twist in the air, bring that right hand to the left thigh. If you prefer, if you haven't got the room, then we just come back to center. Maybe lift the arms up in front of you and then do your twist on the other side. So whichever way works for you. Inhale, coming back up. We do two more on each side. Left hand, right thigh. Coming back to center. Inhale again, maybe lift the head up if that's all right for your neck. Exhale, right hand, left thigh. Just one last time. Let the inhale lift you up. Exhale to the other side. One more time. Perfect. Coming back to center, give the shoulders a little roll maybe. Let's just slide that right hand away, do a little side bend. Slowly coming back to center. Go over to the other side. I'm going to do one more on both sides before we decide to stay there, just for a couple of breaths. So we go over to the right again. Feeling that lovely stretch. Try to keep the sitting bones grounded as best as you can. So as you go to the right this last time, we're going to hold it for a couple of breaths. So over we go, just soften through the elbow, maybe spiral the ribs up to the ceiling. If you can look up to the ceiling, that's great. If that's too much for your neck, look to the floor. Close your eyes, just let your head be in neutral. Inhale, one more time, coming back up. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Slowly coming over, softening through that elbow, rotating the ribs and the armpits up to the ceiling if you can. And slowly and gently come back down to centre. Fabulous. So we've kind of moved our spine in every way it can. We've rotated it, we've rounded, we've flexed, we've done the side bending. So let's put it all together. Before we do that, we've got one little focus on our breath. Now, I did mention about having a belt or a string. If you haven't got it, it doesn't matter, we can use our hands. But I'd like to notice, I'm actually going to come up on my knees here. This makes it a bit easier. And again, I'm going to use my little block. So you can come up onto your knees if you want. It's just a change of position for our bodies as well. So the idea here is we're either going to bring our hands to our waist, thumbs coming back if that's comfortable for you. If you've got issues with your, um, with your wrists, then rather than bringing the thumbs back, you can just kind of have the whole hand here. So basically we're trying to feel those lower ribs. If you have got a belt, then we can do just below our um, bra line, uh, Caroline and Paulette, you may have to help Mark and Jeff know where that is. Cross the strap, they probably know. Cross the strap over, just hold it very lightly. So if you have got a strap, you're going to exhale completely and kind of squeeze, kind of pull the straps a little bit. Then as you inhale, the idea is that you feel that the strap being forced apart because of your expansion through the lower rib. So we exhale, Inhale. So if you don't have a strap or a cord handy, hands on the lower ribs, the same deal. As you exhale, remember, you can begin to kind of squeeze those ribs in just a little bit as well. Inhale, push the ribs out. Feel those lower ribs expanding. Exhale again. Really don't be shy about doing that loud exhale. Inhale, widen. And exhale. Now imagine there's another pair of hands around the back of your body. And then you're going to feel now your ribs at the back expanding as well. Breathe into your back. We had this discussion the other day about some people saying that breathing into our back really opens up our lungs a bit more than we normally do. There's also a media report today saying that older people struggle more with this current virus because the... Um, the, the lungs are tight, they haven't got that expansion. So as yogis, we need to be so grateful of our breathing practice and never underestimate it. Just a couple more. Feel those ribs pushing the, um, the hands and the elbows away to the side. And as you exhale, draw them in using those intercostal muscles and then squeeze to get that last bit out. One last one, give it the best shot, guys. Fabulous. 
So not only have we done our deep breathing, but we've made sure that that diaphragm, which is normally dome, has dropped down. So we're toning the diaphragm, massaging the internal organs, doing all that good stuff. Okay, let's come up onto our hands and our knees now. So again, if you have issues with your knees, you've got your cushions. If you have got a mat, even if you haven't got a yoga mat, maybe you've got a little mat somewhere in your room, you could just kind of fold it up, make a little bit of padding there for you. So whatever feels right for you. So again, we're just going to do a few little gentle cat cows. We know that the invitation is for the wrist to be underneath the shoulders. Again, that's fabulous if that works for you. Some of you I know have got wrist issues. If you are using a mat, maybe just kind of roll it up a little bit so you've got the edge there, or even come up onto your fingers. So just taking a few moments, finding the flat back, toes tucked under or flat, spreading your fingers. Remember, we're invited to take the weight in our fingers and the joints rather than dropping all of our weight in our wrists. And just a few rounding up. And most of us are quite good at rounding up through the upper back. So we really want to make sure that we drop the tailbone down, draw the navel right in, really feel that we're kind of changing and stretching through the lumbar spine. The tailbone kind of leads us. Mm, draw the collarbone forwards, rounding up again, really try to feel the ribs and the hips almost touching. Just one more. Just loosening through that spine. When we're up in our cat pose, we can add a little wiggle if you like. And when we go into what they call the cow phase, then we can add a little wiggle there. Just do little side bends, wagging your emotionally tail, doing little of the crunches on each side. Slowly come down onto your forearms and just bring your hips back a little bit. Some of you may be able to get your head on the floor. Some of you may want to keep your head between your arms. You can just push the palms together a little bit, that will engage a bit more through the biceps and triceps, so you can feel that, the upper arm muscles. No intention of the hips coming back to the heels, this is all about the shoulders. Opening up the chest and gradually just come forwards, maybe touch your thumbs with your chin, and exhale, come forward, come back again. Inhale, come forwards, maybe take your chin down towards your fingers and come back one last time. And really allow the chest to come down to the floor. So you may be able to feel that the, um, the um, thoracic spine is almost arching. We're getting a little back bend there, so it may feel very tight. Now just take three breaths here, pushing the palms together, pushing the little fingers of the outer edge of your wrist into the floor as well. Notice how that really gets into the whole shoulder girdle. Slowly and gently come back up. Just roll those shoulders a little bit. Mm. Let's just do one more shoulder opening while we're here. Just move your, I'm going to move my left hand into the middle of my mat. I'm going to turn away from you first, sliding the right hand underneath. And just gently, and I do mean gently, let's not collapse down onto our heads or shoulders. Gently come down onto your shoulder. Maybe the head resting on the floor, maybe not. You can keep the hand on the floor. So we don't have to move that hand up. We can just stay there. That may feel more comfortable. You can bring the palm of your hand onto the floor. I'm sorry, I'm just... <laughs> See, it's on tape now, isn't it? I can't get away with that one. Palm of your hand on the sacrum. And if you wanted to, then open it up to the ceiling. So lots of places where we can stay, guys, okay? Never feel forced to go beyond what feels comfortable. Slowly and gently come back out. Mm. And let's just go straight to the other side. In your own time, slide the other hand under. You probably notice one side's a little bit more comfortable than the other. Mm. Try not to get distracted by remembering to uh, dust the skirting boards when you've finished. Slowly coming back, hands on the sacrum, maybe, maybe up to the ceiling, maybe you're more comfortable with it down here. Take a couple more breaths here. Notice that the hips have swiveled, trying to keep them in a straight line, and slowly, whenever you're ready, come back. And we're going to come back, we're going to come and sit on our heels. Again, that's where that cushion may come in. 
put it between your hips and your heels. You'll be able to put the cushion underneath your knees. And just come into your child's pose. One potato, two potato position with your hands, maybe bringing the hands onto the floor. Whatever feels right for you. And breathe into the back of your body here. Really notice how you can feel that lovely stretch. Your lumbar spine is now rounded. So the lower back's having a beautiful stretch. You can feel all the connection here. Hmm. Perfect. Hands to either side. We're going to come back up. And we're going to try to do some work on our hips as well as through the rest of our body. So bringing the hands forwards, bring the right hand out of the way and bring that right foot forwards. We'll take as long as you like. We're just going to rock here a little bit. Again, I'm actually, you can see, I, it's quite handy having my mat close to the sofa here. I don't know if you can see it. Because if it's too much and you've got a chair here, then use that to help you. Okay, this is not supposed to be a horrible experience. <laughs> Walking your hands back. Do that rather stretch. If you want, you can bring your hands onto those toes to stretch them back. Slowly coming forwards. Bringing, I've got my right leg here, so my right hand on my right thigh. Just doing a little twist here. Slowly coming back, both hands on the floor. Move them back if you need to for your runner stretch. Inhale, coming forward, same thing. Right hand, right thigh, twisting up. Coming back again. If anybody wants to work a bit harder as you come forwards, tuck the back toes under, lift up through that back knee. Slowly drop it back down as we come back. Great, come forwards, slide that leg back. Just take a few moments in your extended child's pose. So just reach those hands out. Your gaze could be going slightly forwards, but suggested is to bring the head down between the arms again. And then we go to the other side. So hands on the other side, take that left hand a little bit out of the way, leaving room for the left foot to come forwards. And again, just have a little play. Check out how that feels, how tight are the hip flexors on that right thigh, you can feel it here. How do the hamstrings feel on the left leg as you come back? Come back into your runner's stretch, just stay there for a second or two. Maybe drawing those toes up with your hand if you wanted to. As you come forwards now, we're going to turn to the other side. So left hand, left thigh, lifting up through the left shoulder. Slowly come back into your runner's stretch. Just two more times, coming forwards, coming back. You can leave the hands there if you're able to. And again, if you want to do this time, tuck the back toes under, lift up, stretch out through, and really reach out through that back heel, slowly coming down again. Perfect. Slide that left foot back. Widen the knees this time. Really come down quite, not, quite wide here. Okay, it's about if you don't, don't have a mat. Just come down as wide as you feel you can. Maybe this time you'll be able to come down onto your arms rather than your fists. Forehead on your hands, maybe on the floor. But allowing your body to really go down through those thighs. So you're allowing the ribs and the, and the belly to come down closer to the floor. Chest coming to the floor a little bit. Maybe noticing that that actually gives you a bit of a back bend to get in the upper back. Remember, every time we do that, we're opening through our hearts. Mm. Now we'll slowly and gently walk your hands back and coming back. So let's see how our downward facing dog's going to look or feel this morning. Doesn't matter how it looks, remember? So maybe take the knees back a little bit, tuck the toes under. Just kind of Kind of almost brace yourself in a way to lift those knees off and work from the core. Imagine there's a golden thread going through the navel, through the spine, so that as you come up, there's a kind of a gentleness. There's just a lifting up and slowly and gently come into your downward facing dog. So just walk it out a little bit. We know what that means. You can lift up one foot completely if you wanted to, or just walk out through the heels. Come up onto the balls of your feet, take the hips back and then slowly soften those heels down. 
Now change that this time. Come up with the balls of your feet, round up through the back and bring your shoulders forwards. Bend the knees and come back into your downward dog. Let's do one of each of those again. So come up on the balls of your feet, take the sitting bones back, chest to the floor. Slowly drop those heels down. Coming up on the balls of your feet, round up, draw the navel in, shoulders forwards, bending the knees and coming back. Slowly and lightly drop down to your knees. Come into any modified child's pose that works for you. Do a few little wrist curls with those wrists. So let's try doing something where we're not putting all that weight on our wrists. So we're going to bring the elbows to where those hands were. Always remember to measure them. They're invited to be just shoulder width apart. Bring the palms together, namaste position. And again, a little bit of pressure there, maybe that'll just engage the upper arm muscles. Take the knees back a little bit, toes tucked under, and coming into our dolphin pose, which is kind of almost the same as your down dog. We can walk it out. Then come up on the balls of your feet, take the sitting bones back, draw the navel in, slide the heels down. We can come up on the balls of your feet, round up and bring the shoulders forwards. Let's do that one more time on each. So lift up through, sitting bones back, see if you can feel that arch of the lumbar spine, drop the heels down, come up onto the round, balls of your feet, round up, shoulders forwards and come back. Knees wide. Leave the arms out there to begin with, just kind of soften back, maybe head on the floor. Mm, feel that buzzing and tingling in the shoulders. Slowly and gently come back into, again, modify your child's pose for you. Mm. Maybe give the shoulders a shrug, maybe take those hands right back by your feet, that may be quite comfortable for you. Maybe turn the head slightly to one side if that's available to you. And if you feel you want to change the position, then do. Maybe the chest will come to the floor. If you have got the head to one side, remember to turn it to the other side. Hmm. Slowly and gently come back up. Fabulous. Coming back, we're going to sit down on the floor. Now I'm going to try and going to try to do this back to front to you. So it's looking like I've got my legs to the right when I look at the camera, uh, to the left when I look at the camera. So I'm going to try and say that. So I'm just going to use the cushion to pop up what in fact is my right thigh as you're looking at me. Again, we can have this side back a little bit more, we can have it forwards. So we're kind of sitting on one side. My knees are kind of a little bit wider than my shoulders apart. You can have them closer or further apart, whatever works for you. So just sitting up nice and tall. Hmm. So remember this is called our mermaid's pose. So we're gonna take our, I'm, I've got my right hand, my right arm here, I'm gonna take my right arm to my right leg and lift up through that left arm. So again, very strong stretch through the left side of my body. Slowly bringing that hand down. I'm going to drop down onto my elbow here and bring that top arm up and over. Let's do that one more time. Slowly coming back up, grab hold of your shin or the foot that's coming behind you, lifting up, slowly coming back to the other side and coming over. Perfect. Now while we're here, before we move, let's just bring that knee back as far as we feel we can. So we're looking for quite a good stretcher in the quad of this leg. You can lean away a little bit if you want, you can keep upright. And again, maybe just do a little twist here, a little bit of pressure on this bent knee in front of you. Maybe a little bit of pressure on that knee that's coming around behind you. Let's do that one more time. So if you imagine, if you have got a mat, that's great. If you haven't, but imagine this knee, my right knee is now pointing to the back of my mat. I'm going to take both of my hands over towards the opposite side of my mat. And really just have a good stretch here. I'm twisting through the body. I've got this lovely stretch all through the obliques, a deep stretch through the quads. 
If I wanted to, I could maybe come back, take that leg away. You don't have to, but I may want to, just to go a bit deeper perhaps. I could perhaps come down onto my forearms here. Breathing in deeply to wherever you feel it. So again, remember there's always somewhere to go. Gently, gently, gently bring that leg back. Yeah, why not? While we're here, just do a little twist. Bring it across your bent knee if you can. Sitting up nice and tall. I'm kind of sitting, my right buttock is on my left heel, supporting me. And just do a little twist here. So I'm going to wrap my left elbow around my right knee. Just coming into a little twist. If it's too much, keep the foot on the inside and just do a little twist here. And then let's just change sides. So again, I'm going to sit with the other buttock on the cushion. You can have a block here if you wanted. You don't have to use anything at all. It's all about being comfortable. If we're comfortable, we're going to enjoy it a bit more. If we're enjoying it, then we're going to work a bit harder as well. So again, I've got my legs on the other side now. I'm going to grab hold of my left shin with my left hand, inhaling up through the right arm. And then exhaling, bringing that hand down. Inhaling, maybe coming down onto the elbow if you wanted to, stretching out through that top side of your body. And exhale, coming back down. One more time on both sides, guys. Inhale, coming up. You can look down at the floor. We don't need to you know, overstretch our neck too much. Slowly coming back, dropping the elbow down. Stretching up. Just notice how your spine feels. I think I mentioned to a few of you before, I've got a bit of an issue going on in my back at the moment. Uh, it's funny how I can really feel it sometimes more than others. So coming here again, we got this, my left knee is now going back here. Just going to try to get a little bit of a stretch here. I may want to go a little bit deeper here. Mm. And I may want to come down here as well a little bit, maybe take the hand back. Again, lots of options, little twists here. Coming around on both sides. And then again, we're going to go to the opposite side. So I've got one leg coming up the back almost. I'm going to take both hands over to the other side. And immediately I feel this a bit tighter than the other side. Maybe coming down onto those elbows. Only just, yep, you know, just is enough. But I certainly, I'm not going to bring this leg back, but you may want to. Take it back a bit more if that feels right for you. Stay on your hands rather than your elbows. Remember, there's always somewhere to go, always somewhere to stay. Breathe into that lovely stretch, hip flexors, pelvic floor, top of your hamstring and um, quads there, and bring that leg back over. Coming into your twist, if you prefer, keep it on the inside of the bent knee. Otherwise, bring it over, sitting up nice and tall. Right arm over left knee, left arm over right knee if you've gone the other way. It really doesn't matter, as long as we've done both sides. And just take a few breaths here, just drawing that knee to the armpit, armpit to the knee. Maybe looking behind you. And again, resting this left buttock almost on your right heel, perhaps. Hmm. Slowly and gently. Down me back. Fabulous. Let's come onto our hands and knees. Just take a few moments here. Maybe do a few little cat cows if you feel like you'd like to. Hmm. And again, if we can, maybe let's... This, this poor cushion's never been used so much in my lounge. <laughs> so coming onto our knees again, with the cushion or not, whatever you'd like to do, bringing the hands into the lower back, or maybe the fists into the lower back. And just really trying to almost encourage the tailbone to drop to the floor. So we inhale, lifting up through the chest, and then exhale, just kind of round the shoulders, draw the chin in a little bit. Inhale again. Imagine you're trying to make sure that the sacrum doesn't move at all. It's all in the thoracic spine of the chest, lifting up through. And exhale. One more time. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, squeeze the elbows. And exhale. And again, as we come down this time, maybe come into your, I think it's some form of child's pose. And keep the arms out in front if you prefer. You can bring them underneath your head. Hmm. And again, just breathe in. Make sure we haven't jammed through the lumbar spine and through the sacrum. Hmm. 
slowly and gently come back up again tuck the toes under lift up into your downward dog walk it out a little bit really don't be shy about swinging those hips here have a good old little twist going on bend both knees have a little rock and roll hmm perfect going to move the cushion out of the way we can either stay in down dog we've got several options here one option would be to drop down to your knees and exhale and to inhale coming up into your downward dog so it would be exhale knees on the floor child's pose extended inhale bracing coming into your downward dog the other option i like to explore is that we inhale take that leg right up the ceiling exhale bring it forwards inhale come up we've got the right leg moving at the moment exhale come forwards one last time inhale and exhale slowly come back into your child's pose if you were coming onto your um if you were staying in child's pose all the time it's totally fine child's pose to down dog it's still a lovely flow using different parts of your body so if you were doing the legs we need to do that one more time with the other side Toes tucked under, downward facing dog, walk it out a little bit. Now it's the other leg, lifting it right up to the ceiling. And as you exhale, tuck it in tight and carry it forwards. Inhale. And exhale. One last time, guys. Inhale. And exhale. Slowly coming back, downward facing dog. Drop the knees down, widen them again. And bring those hands back over your thighs, coming down into a wide-legged child's pose. Head to one side if that's available to you. If not, just keep the head in front. Mm, breathe into your back, breathe into your shoulders, breathe into your hips. If you have got the head on one side, time to turn it to the other side and just take a few moments there. Hmm, perfect. Hands out in front of you again, tuck the toes under. We're going to come up, we're just going to take a step halfway up the mat. Walk those hands back to join our feet. Remember to keep the knees soft so we've got that lovely stretch through the lumbar spine and the sacrum rather than a pull. Bending the knees, push the floor away. Inhale, rounding yourself up. Coming up to standing. Now take a time been on the floor for quite a long time in various positions perfect so feet are going to be at least hip width apart I was always invited by my teacher to have the big toe bounds just slightly inwards so there's almost an alignment in the outer edge of your feet rock forwards and backwards just a few times just if you can feel that kind of Lovely stretching through the soles of your feet. And then just kind of walk, lift up one heel, then the other. And then settle into your mountain pose. So just try to get that alignment. Tailbone dropping to the floor, zipping up the front of your body. Shoulders together. Imagine we're balancing a book on the top of your head. Chin parallel to the floor. Mm. And maybe glue your hands to the side of your thighs. <coughs> if I turn sideways, it may make a bit more sense, maybe. And imagine your hands are glued here, but you're desperately trying to slide them backwards. And all that happens is the head of that upper arm bone goes backwards. Because you can't move the hands, they're, they're there. So leave the shoulders back where they are, shoulder blades slightly coming together. And then we can release the arms if you wanted to point them forwards or pointing towards your thighs. Or well, they can stay there. Hmm. We're going to bring our hands to our heart centre, thumbs resting against our breastbone. See if you can feel the beating of your heart underneath the tips of your thumbs. Hmm. So it's probably not one of our favourite poses, chair pose, Utkatasana, lightning pose, fierce pose. No wonder it's got so many names. So what we need to do is just do it gently to begin with. We're going to inhale, lift up through those arms. Imagine there's a chair behind you and just kind of imagine you're going to sit back onto it. 
and then check out and see if you can still see your big toes. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, bring those arms back down again. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, lifting up. And exhale, sitting down on that chair. Inhale, coming back up again. And exhale, arms down. One more time. This time we're going to finish with a fold. So inhale, coming up. Exhale, that's sitting down. Inhale, tuck the tailbone under. And then exhale, fold forward. So again, keep the knees soft if you need to. Hands on the shins, wherever they need to go. And you're just going to walk out your Uttanasana. Take a little stretch round. Just bring your fingers over to the right-hand side. Just have a little stretch here. Slowly walk those hands back. Take them round to the left-hand side or the other side. Whichever side you've done, take them to the opposite side. Take your left hand in the centre of the mat and lift up through that right arm. Exhale, bring the hand down and change them over. Inhale, lift up the other arm. Exhale, now begin to bend the knee. Left hand on the floor, left knee bends. Really feel that IT band on the other side. Change the hands over, right hand on the floor, right knee bends. Open up through to the ceiling with the left hand. One more time, guys. Slowly and gently come down. Widen those feet a little bit more. Good shoulder distance now, probably. Hold on to your arms and just hang loose here. Keep the knees soft. Maybe use your upper body a bit like a pendulum here. Just kind of swing it. Try to tuck the ears down between the arms. Mm. You can either bend one knee as well if you want, as if you're doing little side squats, or keep the knees both soft and just move through the upper body. And then just release the arms, crown of the head to the floor, and just hang here for five breaths. Every time you inhale, you may feel yourself almost lifting up a little bit. And then as you exhale, draw the navel in and see if you can give yourself permission to soften a little bit more. Inhale. Exhale, soften. Try to keep the weight balanced in the heel and the balls of your toes. Exhale, last time. Slowly and gently, hands on thighs. Gradually begin to round yourself up. Slowly, 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 coming back up to centre. And gently in your time, coming back to Tadasana. Hands at your heart centre. I'll just take a few moments here. Go within. Connect with your breath. Mm. If your mind is buzzing around, think about all the other things you've got to do later on today. Don't worry about it. Just, just be here. Be here, be present, be now. Never more. So is it important to be in this moment, in this moment where there's so much uncertainty going on around us? Invite yourself to think of three things you're grateful for. Maybe grateful for being able to share this time together. I'm grateful for the rain, it saves me having to water my garden again. Now grateful for the sunshine. So it doesn't always have to be deep, meaningful, spiritual things we're grateful for. It can be very simple, everyday things. I'm grateful for being able to make myself a cup of tea or coffee whenever I want to, whatever it is. And let's be in the habit of being more grateful, of having more moments of gratitude, especially during this time when we can slow down. Most of us, some of you may still be working, but most of us, we can slow down. Can we look at this as being the most amazing gift rather than the worst time of our lives? In your own time, the invitation is to bring yourself down into a seated or a supine position for Shavasana. So in your own time, guys, come down onto the mat. 
If you prefer to be seated, it's totally fine, whatever works for you. Take a few moments if you've got a blanket, maybe pop it over you. If you've got a pillow, a cushion, put it underneath your head. Maybe you've got a block, you want to put it underneath your hips or your feet. Whatever position you know for you works. We all have our favourite positions for Shavasana. Hmm. Whatever position you've chosen, just take a few moments here. Making sure the head is in the right position. Gently moving it from shoulder to shoulder. Roll the shoulders a little bit. Mm. And again, here's your chance to go with it. Give yourself permission. Hopefully noticing your body feels a little bit warmer inside, internally, more energised. And yet at the same time, calmer maybe. It's such a strange dichotomy, being able to feel energised and yet super calm at the same time. Notice your mind. Try not to get attached to any of your thoughts. Just notice the fluctuation of them. Notice the coolness of the air moving in through the nostrils, the way the body just expands, gently drawing that breath in. The echo of your beating heart. Just really be aware of all the functions of your amazing bodies. Maybe allow your breath to become a little bit softer. Soften the facial muscles, the jaw, around the eyes. Soften through the neck, draw the chin in a little bit, really take a few moments to settle. Allow the shoulders to soften, whether they're sinking into the ground beneath you or just softening. Allow that softness to spread all the way down through the arms to the fingertips, to the thumbs. Vertebrae by vertebrae, rib by rib, feel that softness spreading down through the back of your body, the sides, the front. Even your internal organs, the abdominal area, seems to soften. Pelvic area, sacrum, pubic bone, hips, right down to your tailbone. And then soften those legs from the hips, through the knees, to the ankles, to every single toe and the sole of your foot. Give yourself permission to come to this place of ease, this place of rest. If your mind wanders, it's totally fine. Don't get annoyed. Don't get frustrated. It's what it does. It's okay. Just acknowledge the thought and then redirect your attention, your focus back to your body, your breath. The very essence of being. Here I am right now, this moment. This body, this breath, right now. I am being breathed by my breath. My breath is breathing me. My invitation is for you to stay here as long as you feel you'd like to. Just being at rest, being at ease, being at peace with yourself. 